Hello, and thank you for watching this August 10th weather update, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribull. Well, it's kind of strange to say this, but after an incredibly wet growing season, the rain we received across large sections of the Corn Belt over the last seven days was much needed. As the corn is busily filling kernels here in the start of August, inadequate moisture will hinder the plant's ability to fill out to its full potential. As you can see from this map, which shows the last seven days of accumulated precipitation, only a small swath of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northern Illinois missed out. However, these regions are mostly doing very well with soil moisture. This rain is also great news for the bean crop as we head into mid-August, a very sensitive time period for beans as extremely dry weather leads to aborted pods. Oddly enough, as wet as Texas was to start the spring and summer, much of the state has not seen rainfall in several days. As a result, drought conditions have crept back into eastern and central parts of the state. Here's a look at the latest U.S. drought monitor, and we can see that many states in the south are abnormally dry. However, the states west of the Continental Divide are in the worst shape. Currently, five states are completely enveloped in at least moderate drought, and the extreme heat out west has made for a tough summer growing season for the hundreds of types of crops grown here. We have been monitoring the evolution of this drought since 2013, and due to its slow and persistent evolution, it will take some time to end. There is good news in sight, though, and I will touch on this at the end of this video. Now, most of the farmland out west is irrigated, and there have been numerous reports of such significant drops in the water table that parts of California are actually sinking in elevation, just a small amount. And small earthquakes have even been recorded as the water levels continue to plummet. Irrigation wells are being dug, but at an enormous expense and at incredible depths and lengthy wait times. Here's a look at the current reservoir levels in California. This image shows just how dire conditions are in the west. Let's hope the rainy season, which starts in a couple of months, is above average so that the west can start to make its way out of this historic drought. Looking back in the Great Plains in the Midwest, I want to give you a quick update on the potential yields for corn across the United States. The graph shown here displays the U.S. average corn yield since 1948. 2014 currently holds the record, according to the USDA NAS database, with an average national yield of 171 bushels per acre. As 2015 has been a wet and relatively cool year, we are looking for another big harvest. Even though fewer acres were planted and excess precipitation has damaged the corn crop in Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, and parts of Illinois, most of Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, Nebraska, and parts of Kansas and Illinois will have a great year. As such, it is not unreasonable to expect the national average to be somewhere between 167 to 169 bushels per acre, which is about 103 to 105% of the detrended average. This is slightly higher than the USDA's current projections from July. The biggest unknown at this stage is exactly how many acres of corn were planted. With such a large amount of grain globally, this will be an important set of numbers to watch. Speaking of global supply, we must now turn our attention to the current state of the El Nino in the Central Pacific Ocean. The image you see here shows the sea surface temperature anomalies, or differences from normal, from August 8th. The large region of above-normal sea surface temperatures seen across the Central Pacific are the result of one of the strongest El Ninos on record, and by this winter may rival the 1997-98 El Nino event. The significance of this has already been felt across the United States this summer, but looking longer term beyond the U.S. crop, the next large crop for beans and corn will be coming from Brazil during the Northern Hemisphere winter. With planting starting in October, we will need to know what to expect this growing season from Brazil. Each year, production continues to rise in South America simply from the increased number of acres planted. However, their winter has been dry only in northern parts of Brazil, while Mato Grosso and other major ag states have maintained good soil moisture from adequate precipitation. Here's a look at the last 90 days of precipitation in the southernmost parts of Brazil, where a lot of beans are grown. Regular precipitation here has kept this region both out of drought and out of flood conditions. 
What is most important to note is that El Nino conditions often result in better crop conditions in Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. The graphics shown here are from an article published in 2014, looking at the impacts of El Nino on global crop production. As we can see in the images, both corn, shown in the upper left, and soybeans in the upper right, are on average positively influenced by El Nino conditions in South America. Feel free to pause this video to get a closer look. Well, let's come back to the United States and take a look both short-term and long-term for our temperature and precipitation forecasts. This animation shows in blues regions where precipitation is falling, and in reds regions where evaporative drying is occurring. After Sunday's rain moves east, where the rain is much needed, notice how the Corn Belt dries out this week. Thankfully, the recent rains across the Corn Belt were likely enough to finish off the corn. However, expect a dry week ahead if you farm in the Corn Belt. Looking at temperatures, some serious heat brews in the southern Mississippi River Valley westward through Texas, where excessive heat warnings are in place to start the week. However, temperatures farther north are much more moderate, as the Corn Belt dodges another week without any significant heat stress. While 90s do build into the Great Plains, dangerously hot temperatures stay out of the Corn Belt. Looking much longer term, here is the typical El Nino-dominated weather pattern for winter in North America. This graph shows the typical patterns which call for warmer than average conditions across the northern states with drier conditions in the northwest and Great Lakes area. The south tends to stay relatively wet and cool during El Nino winters. As we end this video, here are the December through February forecast graphics produced by the NMME or National Multimodel Ensemble. Notice the similarity between the previous image and these. If this forecast verifies, some drought relief is on its way to California this winter, but it would mean that the drought in the Pacific Northwest would intensify. Again, this forecast is dominated by the strong El Nino event currently happening. There are other large-scale circulations that can offset the impacts of an El Nino, and we will be watching closely for these interactions to influence our long-term forecasts. As always, Weed Agri will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.